next we will talk about the filaria that is also a very important topic uh, which is being asked by the examiners very common in the university exams and the filaria will be asked as a clinical scenario based question and for that you you will be uh, given a scenario like a patient coming to you with a high grade fever there will be enlarged lymph nodes there will be pitting reversible edema if it is a acute case and if it is a chronic case then there will be history of hydrocel elephantiasis and the chyle urea so these three are the features of the these three are the features of the uh, 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 chronic uh, filariasis while uh, all the all these features like enlarged lymph nodes pitting reversible edema these all are the features of the acute filariasis so based on the case you will be given these types of histories there in the question and you have to diagnose it as a case of filaria and then you have to answer the questions after that uh, accordingly so what are the organisms which are causing this filaria so the most common organisms which are causing filaria are the Ucheria bancrofti, Brugia mali and the Brugia timori these are the three most important uh, organisms or the parasites which are causing the filaria among that the Ucheria bancrofti that is nothing but a nematode that is most commonly causing this filaria in the Indian scenario now uh, the larval stage if you talk about the larval stage then you have to remember the names of the two larval stages. actually uh, this has got uh, three larval stages. okay the filaria has got three larval stages: L1 L2 uh, L1 then okay where is L2 L1 L2 and L3 okay so these are the four larval stages there of the filaria and you have to remember the names of first and the third stage of the larva so first stage is also called as the microfilaria and the third stage is called as the filariform larva so the first stage or the microfilaria is the diagnostic form while the filariform larva the third stage is the infective form how will we remember to so remember uh, the the person who has got the first rank in the neat pg will get the seat for md okay so first rank will get the seat for md first rank will get the seat for md so see here first stage is m for microfilaria d for diagnostic form so the first rank will get the md so first stage is microfilaria which is a diagnostic form and the third stage is filary form larva and the infective form which is the infective form so now coming to the life cycle of the filaria or the uh, life cycle of sorry life cycle of the Ucheria bancrofti or for that matter brugia mali or brugia timori anyone so life cycle of those parasites uh, consist of hosts so there are two hosts that we see in the life cycle of these parasites one is the definitive host otherwise the intermediate host so definitive host is actually human what we have seen in malaria the definitive host was the female anopheles because the sexual cycle was uh, getting completed inside the female anopheles but here it is not the case the definitive host here is the human but the intermediate host is the culex mosquito okay then we have the infective form so we have to write the infective form that infective form is the filary form larva then mode of transmission obviously it, if if uh, if it is spread by the culex mosquito then of course the bite of the mosquito will be the mode of transmission okay and then we have to uh, write the development in humans and development in culex so remember whenever you are asked to write the life cycle of any parasite then you have to start from the host the first point you have to write will be the host then you have to write the infective form then you have to write the mode of transmission then you have to write the development of that parasite separately in the different hosts like here the two hosts are human and the culex so we have we will write the development in the human first and then we will write the development in culex mosquito after that so in human the uh, infective stage was the filary form larva so l3 larva is deposited into the skin by the mosquito now that migrates to the local lymph nodes and the l3 larva molts twice and develop into the adult form okay so sorry i was wrong there the uh, first correction i want to uh, make here is that there are four larval stages okay l1 to l4 not three there are four larval stages l1 to l4 so among that l1 is the microfilarial larva which is the diagnostic form and l3 is the 
and the L3 is the filary form larva which is the infective form so here when the L3 larva molt twice so L3 larva will be first converted after first molting will be converted to L4 and after the second molting will be converted to adult worm okay that will be converted to adult worm so after getting converted to adult worm it undergoes it undergoes fertilization and after fertilization will produce the L1 larva so L1 larva is produced in the uh, the L1 larva has been produced in the the L1 larva has been produced in the um, human okay and that L1 larva uh, will be present in the peripheral blood that L1 larva will be present in the peripheral blood and enters into the mosquito when the mosquito bites the human now uh, in the mosquito what happens is that uh, when the mosquito bites uh, the infected person then the L1, L1 larva that enters into the mosquito and after in, after the ingestion of the L1 larva again it will molt twice so L1 was there uh, entering into the mosquito after first molt it will be converted to L2 and after second molt it will be converted to L3 so molt twice to form the L3 larva that L3 larva migrates to the proboscis of the mosquito and stays there and whenever that mosquito bites to a human that leads to the filariasis that uh, begins with the L3 larva in the human so that is all about the life cycle of the parasite now coming to the lab diagnosis how will you diagnose the case of filariasis so first we have to do the specimen collection anywhere we have to do first do the specimen collection uh, for the lab diagnosis so in here the specimen that we collect is the peripheral blood okay so peripheral blood is the preferred specimen for the case of filariasis the time of collection is based on periodicity of the microfilaria okay so uh, generally we collect uh, the periodicity means they the parasites which are causing this filaria they are coming into the peripheral blood at a very particular time like the Vucheria bancrofti they, that comes into the peripheral blood in between the 9 pm to 4 am because that is the time when the culex bites so therefore that comes into the blood in this 9 pm to 4 am that is called as the periodicity of the microfilaria similarly brugia meli and brugia timori they have different types of periodicity okay the periodicity of uh, microfilaria or the Vucheria bancrofti is nocturnal periodicity that is between 9 pm to 4 am so uh, due to nocturnal periodicity it uh, we collect the blood therefore we the, as the microfilaria comes into the peripheral blood in between 9 to 4 so that's why we have to collect the blood also in between 9 to 4 so that the chances of detecting the microfilaria will be increased okay so for increasing the sensitivity of the test we will collect the blood in between the 9 pm to 4 am but if there is an emergency we want to collect at daytime then of course we also collect it uh, can also collect in daytime this uh, by giving dec tablet dec means diethyl carbamazine okay after giving the dec tablet the microfilaria comes into the peripheral blood and then after one hour we can collect the blood specimen this is called as a dec provocation test because dec provokes the microfilaria to come to the peripheral blood in the human okay so this is the time of collection this is how we collect the specimen and that is the timing of the collection of the specimen now coming to the the first point we do with the specimen for the lab diagnosis so first thing we want to do is the direct wet mount so with the blood specimen we directly produce a wet mount on clean grease free class slide and there we demonstrate the serpentine movement of the microfilaria if we get this serpentine movement of microfilaria then diagnosis is done and done at that point itself if we get this serpentine movement of microfilaria then diagnosis is done at that point itself we do not need to go anywhere else we do not do uh, need to do anything else for diagnosis for confirmation this is the confirmation the serpentine movement of the microfilaria in the direct wet mount specimen then but if <coughs> that uh, couldn't detect that microfilaria then 
we have to do the thin and thick blood smears remember we have uh, done it in the malaria cases the thick and thin blood smear thick smears are to increase the sensitivity while the thin is to increase the specificity of the taste so uh, thick and thin blood smears uh, should be made uh, and after that we stain it the smears are stained with ramana sky stains like the lismin stains and the jimsa stain these are the two stains that we use for the staining of the thick and thin blood smears and these are then examined these are examined under the oil immersion fields for detecting the microfilaria the false negative results may occur in case of the occult filariasis and wrong time of blood collection so this is the staining and examination pro procedure okay but sometimes the examiner may ask you when do when can you get the false negative result uh, uh, in thick and thin blood smear so that the two cases where we can get the thick and thin blood uh, we can get false negative results are the occult filariasis and the wrong time of blood collection occult filariasis we will see in the next uh, lecture next video and the wrong time of blood collection why because uh, the in if we collect it uh, at the we we know that the parasite of the filaria has certain periodicity like the uteria bancrofti and nocturnal periodicity between 9 am to 4 uh, 9 pm to 4 am so if we collect the blood at uh, suppose 12 noon so how will how are we uh, how are we supposed to get the parasite in that blood we are not supposed to get that blood because that is not the time when the uh, parasite will come out to the peripheral blood of that person so that wrong time of blood collection uh, can lead to this false negative result okay then we have the quantitative buffy coat examination so quantitative buffy coat examination again similar to the malaria so quantitative buffy coat examination the blood is taken in a capillary tube internally coated with acridine orange and then the capillary tube is centrifuged that causes separation of the components of blood as per the densities and then we examine the buffy coat we can get the serpentine movement in the buffy coat of that uh, buffy coat of that uh, you know capillary tube in that capillary tube so if that uh, if that uh, parasite or that movement is in there in the buffy coat then of course this may be also this may also be a, a way of diagnosis of the filaria then we have the serology so in serology we have antigen detection and antibody detection so uh, in antigen detection that is very sensitive and specific test we detect og 4c3 antigen and ad12 antigen these two antigens are detected using the elisa and immunochromatographic test other than that we can also do the antibody detection that uh, in antibody detection we generally detect the wbsxp1 uh, uh, antibody against this antigen wbsxp1 antigen okay and the method is flow through assay and also we can detect the antibody against wb123 antigen by immunoprecipitation test so remember the name of this antigen ogc I mean OG4C3, AD12 antigen, WBSXP1 antigen and WB123 antigen. So these are used in the serology for detection of the filaria in the through the blood specimen. Okay. Then we have imaging. Of course, imaging can be done. In imaging, we have ultrasound where we can see dilated tortuous lymphatic vessels can be detected and in that vessels we may occasionally also uh, see the serpentine movement or the movement of the parasite in that in those vessels okay like this like this like this so that will that is called as a filarial dance sign in the vessels that is also a diagnostic of the filaria then we have the molecular method that is common to all the uh, lab diagnosis so in molecular methods we have pcr and real-time pcr based assays that has been developed and these days are highly sensitive and highly specific so by that we can detect the filaria these are all the tests by which we can detect uh, the filaria in the lab okay this is all about the filaria